Hi everyone! Today I will show you how to build very professional and very high quality graphs in less than 10 minutes. So no need to have any prior knowledge of Python, no need to download any fancy software, just follow these simple instructions and I will explain everything in detail. We will begin with installing Google Colab inside your Google Drive. Now, some of you guys may have already done that, so feel free to skip that part. But if you are accessing Colab for your very, very first time, we will open a brand new tab and we will navigate to colab.research.google.com. Enter. And just for the sake of this video, I will log into a very old account of mine. I haven't used this account since I was 16, therefore the very uh, gothic username. And once we click on new notebook, you have officially installed Google Colab on your drive and we can move on with plotting. We will type import pandas, yes, as in panda bears, and we will import it as pd. And this command is very straightforward. We are basically importing the Python library we'll be using for our graphs and we're calling it pd instead of pandas. Now let's pick a list of integers for our domain and our codomain, or in other words, x and y. We will begin with y and we will set it to uh, 2, 4, 6, and 8. And we will set our x to be equal to 1, 2, 3, and 4. And once we've figured out the x and y values for our graph, we can go ahead and plot it. For this, we will need two commands and we will start by typing graph equals pd, which is our pandas library, dot data frame in camel case, very important, and inside the round brackets we specify our y-axis first and then we will specify our x-axis, okay? In the next line we will type graph dot plot and inside these round brackets the kind of graph we are looking to get, in our case kind will be equal to line because we are looking to plot a line graph. And once you guys are ready, you can either press on this uh, play button, which is run cell, or you can press control enter. Awesome. So you guys can see that pandas created this beautiful graph for us. And just for the sake of uh, the demonstration, I'm going to change one of the values to a 10 and rerun this cell again with control enter. And you guys can see how easily these values can be modified. So what bugs me at this point is the fact that my f of x is called zero. I don't want it to be called zero. I would like to have a proper name to it. And the way to do this is to convert this list into a uh, dictionary. We will copy everything, including the square brackets, and we will open some curly brackets. Now inside these curly brackets, we will specify a key to our dictionary, which in our case will be the name of our function. So inside a set of quotes, we will say f of x. And to separate the name of the field from the value, we will add a colon. And right after it, we will paste our list from before so that this part is the key of our dictionary and this part is the value of our dictionary. Cool. And we will rerun this cell with control enter and as you can see, it's no longer zero, it is f of x. Another very important thing that our graph is missing is a grid. We can add it by typing grid equals true inside our plot statement. And if we rerun the cell with control enter again, we have a grid. Another feature that every graph must have is a title. We can add it right after our grid command. We will type title equals my graph and if we rerun the cell again with shift enter and i'm not confused because shift enter will also run your cell we can see that our graph now has a title another feature that makes a lot of sense is adding a title to each of the axes we can do this uh, right after our title command we will type y label equals to let's say my y title and the x label equals to my x title. Now let's rerun the cell, shift enter, boom, we are done with the title part. But what if 
I need to plot two functions on the same graph. How do we do this? We simply go back to our dictionary and we will separate the new function with a comma and we will set a brand new key called g of x and we will set its value to be a brand new list containing the same amount of items but different numbers just so the two graphs don't overlap so let's say uh, 4 2 minus 2 and 6 we will press shift enter beautiful now we are plotting two functions and let's say we are super happy about our graph we don't need to modify anything and we just need to save it if we click on the right mouse button and we save this image to our computer it's gonna be super small and almost unreadable the proper way of saving this on your computer is connecting your google drive to your google call app we will do this in the next cell so to start a brand new cell you just click on the previous cell and you click on this plus code and this will create a brand new cell underneath. Inside this cell, we will type the following from google.colab import drive. And in the line underneath, drive.mount. And inside these round brackets, we will add a set of quotes. And here we will specify the URL of our drive, which is slash content slash drive. We will rerun this cell with shift enter and we will follow the link and we will choose which google account we want to go for we will allow and we will copy this gibberish and paste it in this cell and once you pasted it just hit enter and your google drive is officially connected to save this graph inside our Google Drive, we will copy the last line of code from the cell above, aka our plot command, and we will assign it to a brand new variable, uh, which we will call graph underscore plot equals, and here you can paste this command. The last thing we'll do to this very long command is we will add another method to it. We will type dot get underscore figure and round brackets and in the next line we will specify where exactly inside our google drive we want to save this plot we'll type graph underscore plot which is our variable we will type dot and then save fig as in save figure and inside this set of round brackets is where we will specify the url now our Google Drive will always start with content and drive. That's why we are copying this line of code, sorry, this uh, string from above. And we will also add an extra folder to it, extra folder or two actually. I already have it open inside my drive. So I wanna save it in my drive and then graphs. Okay, that's the designated folder. And I will go back to my notebook and I will specify my drive a space is okay don't worry and i will specify graphs and after this we also want to include the name of our graph in my case i'll call it my underscore graph dot pdf because i want it to be a pdf file and once we're ready we will just hit shift enter and actually there's another very important command that i almost forgot to tackle so you guys probably noticed that there is a gap between the lines of our graph and the edge of our graph, and we can easily fix it by adding another attribute to our plot command. So right after X label, we will add a comma, and we will add another attribute called X lim, as in X limit, which equals to a set of round brackets where the first value would be one, which corresponds with the first value of our domain. And the second value we will add uh, using a comma would be four, which is the last value of our domain. If we rerun this cell again with shift enter, we can see that our graph now starts from edge to edge. Cool, now let's see how this file looks like inside your Google Drive. We'll just navigate to our graphs folder and you guys might need to refresh your page to view your graph. And we'll double click on it. And as you can see, our file is very high quality. You can enlarge it 
as much as you want because we are dealing with a PDF file, which is a vector. It is not a raster image. This way you can easily adjust your file outside of Python if it requires any fine tuning. The software I recommend using for this would be Adobe Acrobat, Adobe Illustrator, or if you need something open source, go for Inkscape, which is also a vector editing software. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, why don't you uh, give it a thumbs up? It's gonna really make me happy. And if you wanna be extra awesome, leave me a comment below. Let me know what you're using these graphs for. Are you a student? Are you a scientific researcher? Are you a CEO that needs to show reports about his company? This is something I'm very curious about, so I hope you guys will let me know. Thanks again for watching and I will see you next time.